I might have to take off my jacket for that one. Yeah. I'm sweating. Me wow. too. Oh my goodness. Hey, what's going on everybody? For First Week Feast, I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by the legit boss herself, Sasha Banks. She's a WWE superstar, a four-time Raw Women's Champion, and today she bravely steps into the squared circle in an I Quit match against the Wings of Death. Sasha, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, I like the intro. How are you with hot food? I love hot food. Um, I felt like uh, I was born with spicy food. I've been eating it since I was a little baby, so I'm ready for this challenge. Delicious. I like we don't wings. Wanna... So I've never heard a professional wrestling origin story that I wasn't fascinated by, mm -hmm. and yours is no different. As I understand it, one of your major breaks came when you went to a chaotic wrestling tryout. Yes. Where you were the only female up against, as you put it, a bunch of fat Jeff Hardy wannabes. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness, yes. When you um, think back on that day, what do you think set you apart? Ah oh man, besides my looks and just being the only girl there, the moment I found out that there was this little trial, I was 17 at the time, I worked out like there was no tomorrow. And I walked in there and I was like, what is this? I thought it was gonna be like people who look like Hulk Hogan or Batista. And it was just these little teenagers dressed up like Jeff Hardy. And I was like, I got this in the bag. And then I took my first bump and I was like, oh God, is this is what I love. And I'm like, hell yeah. What's one thing that you don't miss about the independent wrestling scene? That's a good question. Scummy promoters. Um, I don't miss getting paid $25 or getting paid by just getting a sliced pizza. It was legit. Either you get pizza or a hot dog or you get $25. That was just like, you know, it. Because I know this is very much a lifelong dream for you. You were emailing wrestling academies at 12 years old. Yeah. What's one thing now that you're one of wrestling's biggest superstars? One thing that really is everything you dreamed it would be, and then one thing that's just kind of a harsh reality of the business. That's, wow. And I feel at ease when I'm in that square circle. The hardest reality is just knowing that it's a lot of politics, a lot of grueling, grueling traveling, which I didn't realize how hard that would be. Getting on an airplane every single day, you know, sometimes you're in the middle seat, sometimes you're on your way back, sometimes in your first class, you just, you never know. I was in Salt Lake City just two days ago and then Anaheim last night. Now I'm going to India this week, it's just, it's nonstop. Hot ones in the morning, Hot wrestling Hot ones in the morning, night. yes. It just goes like that sometimes. You ready to move on? I'm ready to move on. I'm very chewy, sorry about that. Don't apologize. Okay. This is a show where you can get away with that. <laughs> So I wanna stay on the origin story for just a little bit longer because I think some of our viewers might be surprised to know that you're first cousins with Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. And in addition to performing your WrestleMania entrance music, I understand that he helped craft your boss persona. Yeah, I didn't have a large in life character and I was kind of looking around, I'm like, we don't really have any bad guys. So let me turn bad because I was a good guy at the time. And I'm like, you know what? Just accept Snoop Dogg's your cousin, just do it. When I was around him, his bodyguards would always call him, hey boss, 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 boss. And I was like, that's kind of catchy. That's a good little nickname. So I was like, Sasha Banks, the boss. And then it turned to the legit boss. And now I'm here. You see those glasses? And then he's really connected to the WWE. Yeah. You know, he's a Hall of he's Fame a, member. Insane. And then... Anytime he was like with the WWE, I would call him and I'd be like, please take me with you. I love this. Please, please, please. And I remember going with him at 2008. And he was doing rehearsals with the Divas at the time. And he was walking down the ramp. And I was following him behind like this, and I was walking down the WrestleMania ramp. I was 16 at the time, and 25 doing it this year. I'm like, dreams really do come true. And then another MC that seems to loom large for you is Nicki Minaj. I read that you listened to Moment for Life yes. on repeat up until your WWE tryout. I did, that's, that's the only song that I listened to on my flight to my tryout. And I told myself I'm gonna go down to this tryout, and I'm not gonna leave until I got signed. Bada boom, here I am. I love green sauces. Kalisto's wife, another WWE superstar, makes me green sauce all the time. And I legit can drink it. It's, I'm so obsessed. Respect. <laughs> when you do a 30 minute long Iron Woman match mm -hmm. against Bailey, what's the immediate aftermath of something like that? Do you need to take a four hour nap? Do you guys have <laughs> beers to celebrate? How does it work? 
I did have a glass of wine afterwards, and um, I did have a, a large pizza. Because to prepare for that match, all I did was cardio, because I'm like, this is the longest match I've ever had. And then my iron match with Charlotte, I think that went 45 minutes, and I was just like, dead. Because she broke my nose during it, I was just bleeding. I'm like, oh my god, can this be over? Oh, it's finally over, so. Um, yeah, lots of wine. I love drinking wine after a match. It makes me really calm and relaxed. What is the craft service like at WWE? How do they keep you guys all fed with all the strange diet restrictions? Um, you know, there is a little salad bar and we have our plain chicken and that's what I pretty much have every week on a Monday Night Raw. I just stare at the dessert and just hope one day that I can have a bite. Do you remember the first conversation you ever had with Vince McMahon? After we debuted on Monday Night Raw and he bumped into me and he's like, ah, you're the boss, huh? I'm the boss too. I'm like, oh, this is weird. It's so weird, he's so intimidating. I get so nervous to talk to him. Still. Still. Walking on eggshells around them. Always. Right. I'm the boss, like what the, I need <laughs> to have confidence. How does that work? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Mmm, nice kick to it. I love chicken wings for breakfast. Might be my new favorite thing. That's what people like watching this don't realize sometimes. It's really early in the morning right now. <laughs> About 9.30 no in the morning. <laughs> So I know that you're not originally a New Englander, but I know that you've made Boston your home. Boston has a reputation for being maybe the best sports city in the country. Do the wrestling fans stack up? Oh my God, absolutely. I was in Boston when they won the Bruins championship. The whole just town just came out of these restaurants and just went to the streets and just started rallying. I'm like, let me join too, yeah! It was so crazy, that's why I love Boston so much. Anytime I go out in Boston and they say, from Boston, Massachusetts, the crowd just erupts. And I remember my Hell in a Cell match with Charlotte. I lost it, and they were just dead silent. They couldn't believe it. I thought they were gonna start a riot. I'm like, that's Boston fans for you. That's Boston for you, bro. Run y'all fade, and we gonna talk about it later. If anybody gets stabbed, somebody go to jail. Other than that, we out of here, and the meal was delicious. I was just like, jerk taste to it, doesn't mm -hmm. it? I'm looking at this last one, I'm like, oh God. Or this one that has a bomb on it. Yeah, this one has a bomb on it, this one has a bullet on it, and then this one is just... I'm ready for it. All right, Sasha. We have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram. We do a deep dive on our guest Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. Okay. So I'll bust out the laptop, and then you just tell me the bigger story. Okay, Does that cool. sound good? Yeah. All right, laptop, please. <laughs> there we go, off a stool. All I'm right. nervous what you're gonna pull up. All right, first things first. Two legit bosses. Hey, that's right. Rick Ross and the boss. He was really cool. I met several rappers. I met him, P. Diddy, of course my boy Snoop, Wale. Yeah, but he's, you know, Rick Ross, the boss. He's cool. Wale name dropped you in that song, Reminisce. Yes, and he actually made my own song. I, I don't think he's really posted it yet, or like maybe it might be on SoundCloud, but it's really freaking cool. Yeah, he supports a lot of the WWE superstars. He loves New Day. He loves uh, myself too, and um, he's great. He's a huge uh, supporter. He did this show. He did the show. He yeah, he got through. Oh, did he? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, here. Yeah. Awesome. So I have to beat him. I have you to tie do. him. <laughs> oh. Throwback. An eye roll. It's not an eye roll because it's a weird story. So this is not a legit match. It's a paid match, and they're called customs. So it's where fans can put two wrestlers together and pay them to have a custom match. Really? Yeah. So there's girls that can have matches with no shoes on and no socks or in singlets. And I never understood what it was. And I got requested to do so many weird matches and I was like, no, I'm gonna have a regular match. So I only really had two matches because everything else was too crazy. It's crazy that I'm doing a cross face and I was 18 and now that's what I'm doing on the main roster on Raw. It's like a, the bank statement it origin is. story over it here. It really is, it's like the start and I never used that as a finisher on the independent scene. For me, it felt really weird. Yeah, it does sound To be a requested strange. to be like, you know, some, somebody guy, some guy wanted me to pull hair or like cuss and I'm like, no, I'm a wrestler. I'm gonna have a wrestling match, dude. And that's what you're gonna pay for. Bam. I'm getting more scared. Same with me, though. <laughs> <laughs> We're in it together, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel that kick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cranking here a little bit. I'm not gonna have another bite, because I gotta move on, but, woo! Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, woo, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here it's happening. Yeah. That's pretty good. Ooh. Yeah. 
<laughs> so wrestling fans are notoriously hardcore and you've spoken in the past about autograph hawks meeting you at airports or staking out your hotel. Yes. Where is that line? What separates the super fan from somebody who's just taking things way too far? Oh my God, and the internet fans love me for this. They uh, tweet me every day and you know harass me for it. But if I meet you down on the street or if I meet you at the arena, that's fine, that's me, just a normal day. And I'm also tweeting you, hey, come see me at this arena. So I'm letting you know the location. I'm not tweeting you, hey, I'm flying out of Delta, baggage claim six. How do you know that information? How do you know what hotel that I'm at? Like that to me, that's called stalking. That means you're calling the hotel, figuring out that I'm staying here. And you're here at four in the morning, there's a huge just like hotel, airport, no thank you. At the arena, if I see you down the street, if I'm ha like if anything else, if it's outside of wrestling that I didn't tweet out, hey, I'm gonna be here. It's just random. That's completely fine. I'm all game. I mean, how are you gonna miss me? I have purple hair. I can't hide this. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. So early on in your career, you said you faced frustrations being trained in the traditional WWE diva style. Yeah. But in recent years, there's been a clear changing of the guard from the bra and panty matches years ago to now women headlining pay-per-view events. As somebody who has seen that firsthand, what sorts of shifts happened over that time? It wasn't just WWE, it was like women in sport in general, like Serena Williams, Ronda Rossi, they were just taking over. And we kind of had to catch up to that. The training before was just like hair pulling, no striking, make sure you just look beautiful and only have a five minute match to doing it just like them, doing it better than them. I'm better than all these guys. Man, inventing just like them, having first time evers, Hell in a Cell matches, Money in the Bank matches, and we're representing a whole new generation and having mothers and fathers come up to us and be like, because of you guys, I feel comfortable having my little girl watch wrestling, and she wants to be a WWE superstar. And it's so empowering. It's, it's the best film in the world. This is the one that makes me nervous. The bomb. Yes, this yeah. is, uh, it stifled many a uh, Hot Ones guest. Okay, you ready for it? I am. Okay, let's try. <laughs> This one smells deadly. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, yeah. Mm -hmm. That one's deadly. Mm-hmm. Woo! One more bite for good measures. Wow. I might have to take off my jacket for that one. Yeah. I'm sweating. Me wow. too. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's going there. <laughs> <laughs> little, little look. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. These next questions are gonna be really hard. But I'm in it. So I'm fascinated by the Japan wrestling circuit. When yeah. we had Chris Jericho on the show, he had great stories about wrestling in Japan. Yeah. And then I know that you grew up watching all Japan women's pro wrestling. Does it still have a special place in your heart? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, I'm sweating. Mm -hmm. That was so hot. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love all types of wrestling, but Japanese wrestling was my favorite. I still watch it to this day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are Japanese pancakes really as fire as everyone says they are? Um, No, they taste just the same as American pancakes, but a lot of whipped cream on them. If wow. Uh -huh. Dude, yeah. Swoo. Yeah. yeah. It's going down. Yeah, it's going down. <laughs> Ah. If you were stuck on a desert island yeah. and you could have one anime series with you, oh, one K-pop album, uh -huh. and then one movie, what would they be? That's so hard, because I have two, but of course I think Sailor Moon's my number one, but I also love Death Note. K-pop album, maybe Big Bang. I love Taeyang. Oh, he's so cute. And my favorite movie of all time is Old Boy. There These are is. all Asian things. I love Asian people. I'm married to an Asian. It I all comes it. full circle. It does. <laughs> I won. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm not ready for you to say, are you ready for the next one? All right, no. so this is Mad Dog 357 with number nine plutonium. What's that? Ugh. 
One time my um, my husband bought a hot sauce and he had to sign a waiver just to buy it. And you can only use a drop of it and like chili. Yeah, some of these like, in the, on this one I think it has like a whole disclaimer situation. Yeah. So you signed a waiver for it to buy it? No, we just dis we just ignore those things left and right on this Oh show. God, let's do it. <laughs> oh. oh. That's what's kind of oh, good. Sometimes you're just yeah. in the soup, you know? You know, when it comes to what wrestlers wear, sometimes that's just as important really as their finishing move and their attitude. Yeah. So with that in mind, I want to show you some of the most iconic wrestling looks over the years. Sweet. And I just want to get your snap reaction. Okay. The looks that you like, the ones that you don't like, and then maybe afterwards you can crown a king. Does that sound Perfect. good? Perfect. All right, laptop, please. Ah. Oh. Yup, yup, yup. Pain, I love pain. See ya. Ric Flair. You just knew this guy had money just by his suits and his... Is my nose dripping? <laughs> yeah, fine. I'm always checking. Oh my goodness. Painful. Stone oh, Cold. Oh, hell yeah. It was so simple, yet badass, that skull. Oh, that vest. Man, he is a badass son of a... Did you like that? Thank you. <laughs> F beer, drink beer. Oh, I just looked at that shirt the other day. I'm like, what a great shirt, right? Right? Oh, the best. And then... My favorite. Eddie yes. Ah, oh, I love the flames. I love the cross. I even loved his gear from WCW. <sighs> I love Eddie. Who do you think had the best look of all time? Doink the Clown? <laughs> um, of all time? Ooh, that's hard. I would actually have to say Macho Man. He was just flashy out there. I love his colors. If I was a little kid, I would want to be like him. My lips are burning. All right, Sasha Banks. What are you doing? You're pouring it on there? Here's what I would say, Sasha Banks. You're holding up in a way that you are in like a top percentile. Yeah. You're like very much, you know, I know that you're a spicy food connoisseur. I am. And you're showing that today. Yes. Very tough, very strong. But this is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wing. You don't have to if you don't want to. So it has the sauce already with an extra? Yeah, with an extra. All right, I'm in it. Little look I at the team. I have to work tonight. We've had many of those <laughs> looks on this show. All right, a little dumb. It's always a dance with the devil, the last dab. What's that look? Is that like look in that? Textbook, okay. textbook. All right, Sasha Banks, R.I.P. I did it, I feel accomplished. Hot as hell, but I love spicy foods. I told you, Bailey, I love spicy foods. All right, Sasha Banks, whether it's a 30 minute Iron Woman match or choke slamming the wings of death on YouTube, you're a woman who's overcome a lot in life and in wrestling. But with your back against the ropes, <laughs> I wonder, what's your message to the hot sauce makers out there? What do you have to say to Smokin' Ed and all these jabronis who think that they can take Sasha Banks down with the wings? Oh man, I beat you, bitch. Sorry. <laughs> I won! I'm the best! You are the best. I didn't tap out. Because I'm the legit boss. And we out, right? And we out! And we out! If you had to call out another wrestler to go up against the wings of death, who would you call out? Who wouldn't stand a chance against the last dab? Bailey. Against a bomb. Bailey. Bailey for sure. That girl couldn't even do the first one. You heard that, <laughs> Bailey. You heard her. You heard her, Bailey. And Sasha Banks, look at you, you queen, all the way through, killing the wings. Right. Not a drop of sweat. Nope. So impressive from the other side of the table. Yes. And now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, Sasha Banks. This camera, this camera, or this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. What? I have nothing but wrestling. Um, we have Raw 25th anniversary coming up January 22nd. I'm so excited and it's so crazy. 25 years and I'm 25. It's been on since I've been born, so it's insane. Um, you can follow me at SashaBanksWDB on Instagram and Twitter. 
Um, keep on supporting me and keep on supporting women's wrestling and uh, I love all you guys, so thanks for watching. Good job, Sasha, good job. Get that rice out. Yes. Veteran move. Gotta stuff up the stomach. Got a two seg tonight. Gosh. Are any of you guys going to the show or you have to work? You should come. I'll, I'll go. You wanna come? Yeah, I wanna we'll come. We'll get you tickets. All right, deal. It's awesome. I'm in. Yay. I'm in. We'll set that up, right? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Let's set it up. Put me on the list. <laughs> oh my god, you coming. Hey, what's going on, Hot Ones fans? It's Sean Evans, and I'm very excited to announce the Hot Ones Hot Sauce Box. It's a monthly subscription from your friends over at Heatonist. What's in the box? What's in the box? Well, in the box, we have hot sauces from the show, an opportunity to get these labels before anyone else, and then maybe you'll find some treasure. Maybe you'll find a secret item. Like in January's box, when we had Hot Ones Chocolate Pow Pow. How fresh is this product? So fresh, I haven't even tweeted it. So fresh, in fact, this is the first time holding it in my hands. This box can be delivered to you every month. The January box is set sail. We're bringing February into port. No telling what you're gonna get, but you're gonna get it first. It's the Hot Ones Hot Sauce Box, only from Heatonist.